Hi, I'm Nikki Hamilton, co-founder and owner of Hamilton & Hodson. I'm going to show you how to make decorative trim using fabric. This can be the same fabric that you have on your furniture or different. You could have a contrasting colour, same colour but different texture, patterned or plain fabric. First, assemble all that you will need for the job. Sewing machine and thread, tape measure, meter rule or something to draw a straight line with, pins, tailor's chalk, scissors and your fabric. Conventionally, your sewing machine thread matches the background colour of the fabric you are using, but it's your choice, you could have a contrasting colour. Next, you need to know how much to make. To do this, you measure all round the furniture along the route that the trim needs to go. This is usually everywhere that the fabric butts up against the show wood. You will need to add an extra one inch or three centimetres for every section of trim. This is to allow for turning under when you fix it to the furniture. If none of your pieces need to be longer than 1m40, then you will not need to join fabric together. If you have sections longer than 1m40 and they need to be joined together, you need to add an extra 1.5 inches or 4 centimetres per join. Now cut the necessary number of strips you need. Here you have another choice. The strips of fabric can be cut across the fabric, up the length of the fabric, or on the bias, which is diagonally across. You'll get different effects depending on your choice of fabric. If your trim needs to go around curves, then you'll need to cut the fabric on the bias, as this gives it more flexibility, as you'll see later. Measure and mark with a chalk one and a half inches or four centimeter strips and cut. If I am marking the fabric with chalk, I always do so on the back of the fabric. Make sure you keep the strips in the same orientation, especially if you are using a pile fabric, such as velvet. The light reflects differently off the pile and is very noticeable if one strip is a different way up from the others. Put a pin at the same end of each strip. Another thing to note is pattern matching. This fabric has stripes, so when joining it I need to match up my stripes. If you are using a pattern fabric you may be lucky enough to have a pattern that is busy enough for any mismatches not to notice, but you might not be that lucky. If you need to join your strips, this is how to do it. First, the single colour strip that I have cut up the length of the roll of fabric. Take one end with a pin in it and another end without a pin. Put the face sides together at right angles to each other and then pin on a diagonal. This is often where it goes wrong, so check that you have the correct diagonal by opening up the strip of fabric. If it opens into a straight line, you have it right. If it folds back on itself, then it's not right. You need to pin it on the other diagonal. Now to the sewing machine. It makes it easier later if you over sew each end of this short seam. So start in the middle, reverse to the far end, sew forwards as far as you can, and then reverse back to the middle. Pull the strip out from under the foot and trim the seam to half an inch. Repeat this process until you have one long length. Next is a stripy strip that requires pattern matching. As before, I put the face sides together, making sure that one end has a pin and the other one doesn't. I hold them in place and flip the fabric over to check the alignment of the stripes. Once I'm happy with it, I pin it in place. Then sew as I did before. Last I will show you joining the strip cut on the bias. Again, make sure that one end has a pin and the other does not. Ignore the pointy ends of the strips. You could even cut them off so the ends of the strips are square, because they can be confusing. Put the face sides together and, as with the previous version, hold them together and flip the fabric over to check the alignment. When you have it, pin it in place and sew. Now to turn it into braid. Those of you that know me will know how I like to work in inches. Well here it works very neatly because to end up with half inch trim you need to turn the outer half inches of the fabric strip in to overlap each other with the face side visible so you have three layers of fabric one on top of the other giving you a half inch wide length of trim. You need to make sure that you fold it evenly as you're going to sew down the centre so having slightly more fabric in one fold means less in the other so that when you sew, the lesser fold may not be caught by the stitching. 
You can either pin it before sewing or fold and sew as you go. I tend to do the latter as it is just as good to pin it as it is to just sew straight away. Here you can see the reason for the diagonal seam. When the fabric is folded over on itself, the seam is offset and does not fold directly onto itself, producing a bump. There is a bit of a lump, but not as much as it would have been. As you can see, cutting the fabric on the bias makes a big difference to how flexible the resulting trim is. The pitfalls to watch out for are cutting wobbly strips of fabric that will result in trim that is not a consistent width, not keeping the strips of fabric in the correct orientation to each other when joining them, sewing the strips together on the wrong diagonal, failing to catch both folds of fabric when sewing down the centre of the strip. So there you have it, a unique trim to set off your piece of furniture.